Okay, so if you are studying trigonometry, one thing that you must know how to do is graph trigonometric functions. And that's what this video is about. We're going to graph this equation right here. Y is equal to negative 2 sine 6x. So sine is the trigonometric function that we're going to be covering in this video. But you need to know how to graph not only sine, you need to know how to graph cosine and uh, tangent. Let me go ahead and erase this here. So sine, cosine, tangent, uh, secant, uh, cosecant, and cotangent. So there's a lot to know about graphing trigonometric functions. And these problems can get quite involved. And uh, they are timely as well. And I'm going to highly suggest that you use graph paper, color pencil, and uh, a ruler. And just take your time because these problems do you know, require a lot of uh, work. But uh, this particular problem is going to be not too difficult. Uh, we do have to think about a few things here. Matter of fact, if you want to go ahead and try the problem on your own, again, I would recommend graph paper, a ruler, and some colored pencils. But maybe you could just take out a piece of paper and see if you can come up with uh, uh, the graph of negative 2 sine 6x. And you want to kind of show the amplitude and the period of this graph, right? So these are things that you must know how to do if you are taking trigonometry. And typically, trigonometry is taught as part of another course like, say, pre-calculus. Now, if you need help beyond this one uh, simple example uh, in graphing trigonometric functions or trigonometry or more advanced mathematics, check out my full main pre-calculus course. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. Matter of fact, the solution to this problem right here comes from an expert of, um, it's basically out of my full main math class, right? My pre-calculus course. So I'm gonna transition to that video in just one second. But before we get started, let me just tell you who I am. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we're going to be graphing y is equal to negative 2 sine 6x. So a few things going on here. Uh, so we're obviously just going to focus in on the sine graph. But as I indicated, there is a lot more to cover uh, and you probably already know this if you are studying this. You're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, I have to understand how to graph cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. These are problems that you will definitely face on your math exams. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution on how to graph y is equal to negative 2 sine 6x right now. All right, so here's our first problem, y equals negative uh, negative 2 sine 6x, and this is my graph here. Now, let's just make a couple observations. One, we're dealing with sine, okay? So we're going to have a basic, you know, we're thinking to ourselves, okay, we have a basic sine graph like so. Uh, that's one uh, period, one cycle. So I'm like, okay, I have this, but I can see that I'm going to have a period, I'm sorry, an amplitude that's going to be 2. So it's going to be uh, 2 high, all right? Okay, that's my wavelength, my channel, so I'm thinking that. Then let's also notice I got a negative here, right? So what does that indicate? Well, there's going to be a reflection. In other words, I'm going to have a, a flip here as my final graph, but I'm not going to deal with that immediately. And then here I have a value other than 1 in front of the x. That's my b value. And so this means my, my period, my wavelength, is going to be something other than 2 pi. So we got to do some work. Again, we have to make sure we understand what the amplitude and the period is. And then we'll put this all together in pieces. And, uh, and then again, this is my graph. Yours um, doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like this. But um, I'll show you here in a second what should be like at least the minimum amount of things on your sketch that you want to be showing. All right, let's get to it. All right, so here's our problem. Now let's go ahead and just calculate the amplitude. At this point, you should be all, all experts in that. The amplitude is going to be two. Okay, don't you know? Again, it's going to be the absolute value of negative two. So even though there's a reflection here, the wave uh, is still uh, too high. Okay, it's uh, off the x-axis, so that's not going to change anything. And then the period 
is going to be 2 pi over the absolute value of b. b is, again is 6, so when we do that work here, we get pi over 3 as uh, the period. Now, if you didn't get the period or amplitude correct, then you want to go back to the previous videos and make sure you know what you're doing. All right, so one wavelength, one cycle is going to be pi over 3 long, and then our amplitude is 2, and we know we're dealing with sine, and then I have a reflection. Now, what you want to do, and let's go down here and actually look at how my approach. You'd want to leave the reflection for last, okay? So let's take a look at the graph without the reflection. So this would be what that would look like. So this would be y equals 2 sine 6x. In other words, we don't have the negative uh, yet. We'll, we'll take care of that uh, lastly. So if you can look, this, this gray uh, graph kind of represents that. I'm going to have a, a sine, a basic sine wave, which goes up from the origin, okay, and it goes down halfway through, and it ends at one cycle, okay. We know that one period, uh, the period of this, uh, I'm sorry, the one cycle length, or the period is pi over 3, okay. Now, again, I can kind of repeat this, and I go pi over 3 and pi over 3. That's another period completed. That's 2 pi over 3. So, yeah, I have multiple waves here, but you can kind of get the main idea, and if yours looks a little bit different, that's fine, but you, at a minimum, your graph, your sign, you have to have that sine graph starting from right here. Now I would sketch this very in light pencil, okay? But this is not our answer, okay? This is not our answer. And by the way, notice that um, I have I'm showing what the amplitude is. So you, at at a minimum, you want to show what the amplitude is, and you want some um, at least uh, an indication of the uh, one period. Okay, in this case, we'd like to be able to show two. All right, now. Um, let's go ahead and take care of the reflection part. So the reflection is going to be this graph in blue. It's going to be flipped across the x-axis. So you can see from this blue here, I'm going to just kind of do the reverse. All right, and, and I'm going to, but it, the period doesn't change. It's just going to be reflected, and then it just kind of goes through like so. And then once you get the general feel of it, you can kind of just continue on because these are periodic functions. Don't let this kind of trick you. This is still going to come over like so. But, um, but anyways, that's how you want to approach um, graphs that have a reflection in it, right? Get that baseline uh, sketch first and then apply the reflection. So if you're thinking, like some of you might have said, well, I can just kind of process this all and do this, you know, you know one graph because I know the reflection is going to be upside down sine wave. That's fine, uh, but I wouldn't suggest it for kind of beginners, okay? And probably most, even the most teachers and most people are going to be well served by doing a baseline graph and then, you know, applying whatever translations that you have. And this is pretty easy compared to having possible uh, phase shifts or movements left and right on top of reflection on top of vertical translations. But that's in future problems. Okay, let's move on to our next problem.